So for us, we've, we've probably heard the name Tom Brady. If you're not a football fan, I'll explain who he is. But for, uh, for us, we know he, he's an NFL football quarterback, one of the greatest. He's got the most wins of any player or any team. He holds 17 records in the NFL. And when you hear that, you think, okay, this guy must have been you know, some superstar, some kind of genetic freak that you know, God has given everything. But he's not. Have you ever seen him at the beginning when he, his tryouts at Combine? His running, he kind of laughed. Everybody laughed at him. He was slow. He looked clumsy. He wasn't your typical you know, American quarterback. But what he did was, he worked his work ethic. He tried. He did the things he was supposed to do. He studied the plays. He ate healthy. He didn't listen to negative comments. He walked the walk before he could talk the talk. He did the things he was supposed to do to look like a quarterback, to prove that he was a quarterback. People still you know, love and hate him, right? Anybody who's very successful in any sport, people love you and other people hate you. They want to see you fall. But he doesn't allow that to change his mind. He's got his focus. His walk is a quarterback, and he shows that, his accomplishments that he's done. You hear his name, you see what he's done. You can't argue that he's an NFL quarterback and that he's done very well. You know, especially at his age, 44, when you're my age, you kind of go, hey, that gives you some hope. I can still run around and do the things like him. It doesn't work out that way, <laughs> right? We know that. It's kind of that wishful thinking, right? But we can see why we can't. We're not walking that walk. That's not a part of our, our life. We can't just get up and do the things he's done. He spent his whole life doing that. And for us today, we're going to be in Ephesians 5, 15 to 21. And Paul is writing to the church. He's urging the church to walk as Christians, to do what they were supposed to be doing. For their only response for what God has done for them is to do that. Their part. God has loved, his mercy, is everything he's given us for us to go and do the, the things that we need to do for him. And we can see today, are we, are we walking in wisdom? Are we walking foolishly? Are we living a life that is being controlled by something else? Are we in control of our life? Who's controlling us? Who's leading us? Are we wasting our time? What are we doing with our life? My hope today in our prayer is that we see the great love of our God. That we see the mercies that he's given us, the salvation that Christ has come, and that glorious gift that he freely gives us. And for us to do that walk, to live that life, that he asks us to do. Let's start in verse 15 of Ephesians 5. Therefore, be careful how you walk, not as unwise men, but as wise, making the most of your time, because the days are evil. So then, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not get drunk with wine, for that is dispensation, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody with your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks for all the things in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, to God, even the Father, and be subject to one another in the fear of Christ. We see here Paul is writing uh, this book to the church of Ephesus. He, we see the first three chapters he lays out completely what God has done, the mercies, how great our God is, the things he's done for us. In chapter 4, 5, and 6, he lays out our part, what we need to do, our response to God. And Paul is in prison at this point. He's writing this letter to the church as a letter of encouragement, a reminder for them to live that life that they're supposed to live. Because we either walk in this world like the world, we walk in it in the likeness of Christ. There's only two ways. There's no other walk. We're walking with the Lord or we're not. If we're not, we're walking of the world. So we look at verse 15. What's Paul start with? Be careful how you walk, not as unwise people, but as wise. So Paul, clearly, all through Ephesians, he uses that term walk in many different uh, verses and chapters in this book. And he lays out to us what that means. We look at Ephesians 2.1, it says, And you were dead in your offenses and sins, 
in which you previously walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, of the spirit that is now working in the sons of disobedience. Among them we, we too all previously lived in the lust of the flesh, indulging the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as the rest. Paul is telling us our walk, an unwise walk is this, when we walk without the Lord. We walked in a way that we were selfish. We allowed the desires of our flesh to lead us, to take control of us. And so we, got to, we understand that, that walk, what Paul is saying is, don't be like that. That's the unwise walk. We've got to be wise in the things we do. Because if our desires take over, if we allow that to lead us, or sin, where does it go? It doesn't go to God. It goes to the prince of the power of this world, who is Satan, who hates God, who hates us, who wants to destroy us. It's sin. So Paul is stating here, we're understanding what it means. What, what, what's our part? What do we need to do? We have to be wise. We have to give up the things of our past. We see in verse 4, Ephesians 2, it says, But God, being rich in mercy, because of his great love, which he, had, he loved us, even when we were dead in our wrongdoings, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. Paul reminds the readers, the church, of their salvation. It is because of God's mercy, because of what Christ had did on that cross for us, that we are adopted as the sons of God. We have new, we have been converted, we, the in, in, we're changed from the inside. We need to show that we're not of this world, we're not the same anymore, that old self is gone. Christ bought and paid for that, renewed us. And we look again in Ephesians 4.1, talking about walk. Paul says, Therefore, the prisoner of the Lord urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling with which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, being diligent to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Again, Paul is urging us to walk in the church there, to walk worthy of what the price that Christ paid for us. Not to just take that gift and put it on the shelf and leave it. Our job is to take it, to be worthy of it, to allow the Spirit to work in us. We're going to see that, what that looks like, to change us, to make us more like Christ. That's our part. We need to live wisely in our lives because of His love for us. Our response is to walk. When we see that, when God, Christ took that veil of blindness off of our face, we see the difference. We see the hope, the joy, the love our God has for us and is giving to us the peace that we have because of him, the hope, the adoption, the justification, everything that God has done. We do this right, with all humanity, gentleness, patience, bearing with one another in love. That's hard. We can't do it on our own. We need God. We need the Spirit. We need to be wise. We need to be in our word, knowing what God wants, how to change us, what he's doing. The Spirit will help us, will guide us through that. Because on our own, we are nothing. We were dead, as we read before. God made us alive. And we need him to be like Christ, to continually to be like that. And when we see that, uh, this, I don't know, over Christmas, I don't, I don't, it seemed, was it this Christmas, the, it seems to be the worst we've had in the church, how many prayer requests going out, I think it was just crazy how, what was happening here. And, and for us, you know, my wife, she had her kidney stone. I'm not saying because of her age, it's just something that happened, but, um, <laughs> uh oh, um, but she, she had to go through that, and we, we saw Christ in this church. It wasn't long before people found out. People were texting us, and there was one point, I know, <laughs> we're just trying to keep up with the texts and the emails, and, you know, responding to people, and we saw Christ in this church. We saw the love. We saw the offering of doing things. We saw people bringing food over for us. 
and this, that, that love. And that's because of God. That's because God has changed us. And that's what we want to see. That's why God has blessed us with the church. And we are so blessed and thank, uh, thankful for that. And I know people in this church are, as well, other people that are suffering and going through hard times, they see Christ in us. That's not nothing that we can manage ourselves or we can come up with. Anything good in us is because of Christ, because of the change he's done in us. And we see that externally, how the, the offering, the love, the prayer from this church. And we thank you for that. Paul also says in Ephesians uh, 5, 1 and 2, Therefore be imitators of God as beloved children and walk in love just as Christ also loved you and gave himself up for us an offering and sacrifice to God as a fragrant aroma. We see at the beginning, therefore be imitators of God as beloved children. Those of who has kids or you know, have kids, you remember when you were a kid, we liked imitating our parents. We, didn't, we don't like it so much when we get older, do we? We don't want to be reminded that we look like our parents, sound like our parents, or act like our parents. But as kids, we do that. We imitate our, our parents. Because we love our parents. We look up to them. We respect them. We see kids, you know, walk in the, you know, you know, in the snow. The parents are walking. The kids would try to walk in their footsteps. Parents, the kids would say the same thing. They'd dress up like their mom or their dad. They'd pretend to do the work that the parents are doing. They imitate them. And that's why... Paul's saying here is imitate God. We are his kids. We've been adopted as sons and daughters because of Christ. So we are to imitate him. If we love him, respect him, you know, honor him. And that's what we need to do. And how do we do that? Paul continues. We see here how the different transitions that Paul has for these verses. Verse 16, he says, making the most of your time. Because the days are evil. Paul's saying, be careful what, how you walk, what you do, what you went spend your time with. Is it wise things or unwise things? How much time do we have in this world? We don't know. We'd all have a life, a long life. But we don't know how much time we have. How many opportunities do we have to spend time sharing Christ, the gospel? So we need to be wise about that things that we do. We know how easy it is to, to waste time in this life. We know technology is, a, you know, it's a great thing, but it's now a bit of a curse. How much time do we waste on our phone? How much time do we waste on entertainment? How much time do we waste is doing things that just kill time? You know, people now don't like being bored. When I was a kid, we were, you know, you're bored. You didn't say that because your parents said, okay, I'll, I'll get you. You're bored, I'll make you do something. So we just sat there quietly and just kind of figured it out. But for us, are we wasting time? What are we doing each day? What are we wasting it with? What are we spending our time with? And it's not, it's okay to have time off. It's okay to have a break. It's okay to do things you enjoy. But look through your whole day. Look through your week. What does that look like? How much time are we spending with God? How much time are we in his word? Are we becoming wise with God in our time? Or are we unwise? Because we're not putting God there. We need to be in this word. We need to get the wisdom from this. This book is full and it's complete of the wisdom we need to know, the things we need to know, what God wants us to do, what he wants us to give up, who he is. And we've got to be careful of our time because the days are evil. We read before, like, who, who's, in, who's the ruler of this world? Satan is. There's evil things out there, that, those snares that he sets up for us to get caught up in. And we don't know all the different things of this world that are good or bad. We have to have discernment. And if we're not in God's word, if we're not under seeking him, understanding, coming together, learning together, we won't know that. We'll get caught up in these snares. And what happens then? We go back to our old self, become unwise. And we start living a life of the world, not of Christ. And so we've got to come together. We've got to talk. We've got to share. We've got to come to God. We've got to give up the things of the, of that, that are the old self. We know in 431 of Ephesians says, all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and slander must be removed from you, along with all malice. Be kind to one another, compassionate, forgiving each other, just as God in Christ also 
has forgiven you. We got to give these things up. And the only way to give them up is allow the Spirit in us to change us, to do our part, to obey, to have the self control, to go through God's Word and hear it, understand it, and to be conformed into the image of Christ. We either spend our time doing God's will, we spend time doing evil. And we know too, if we're bored, what happens? You usually don't fill up with things that are wise, do we? The temptation's there. Now, I'm not saying every time we do that, but it's there. We've got to be careful. Because we're here as Christians. We know what God has put us here for, our mission. Our time isn't here just to do the, the things that we enjoy in life. To work, you know, a career, then retire and go, okay, I can just go on vacation and, and enjoy myself, put my feet up. That's not what God's will is. That's not what he's asked us to do. We're here for a purpose. To live this life out from, to share the gospel, to live it, to, to worship God by the way we live, to be wise. Don't waste the time that he's given us. We're, on a, we're all on the mission field together. And as, as long as God is, leaves us here, he has a purpose for us and a job for us to do. And for us to make sure that we don't go back to our ways, that we don't become unwise, we don't waste our time, we don't allow the evenness of this world to blind us again and to keep us from him. And we see here, Paul, verse 17 goes, Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Now, Scripture is very clear of what a fool is, right? All through the, old, the Psalms, and Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, talks about a fool. We see in Proverbs 12, 22 and 23, it says, How long, you naive ones, will you live simplistic thinking? And how long will scoffers delight themselves in scoffing and fools hate knowledge? Turn to my rebuke. Behold, I will pour out my spirit on you. I will make my words known to you. A fool does not like knowledge. We know that, right? We've all been there. We've all been in that spot where they know, I don't want to hear it. I think my way is right. I don't care. I don't care what the truth is. A fool doesn't want to know the truth, what's right, what's wrong. They, want to, they care about themselves. It's selfish. It takes them where they want to go. Psalm 14, 1 says, The fool has said in his heart, There is no God. So let's not be foolish and believe that we can push God out of our life. Our walk, we have to be constantly with God to keep that wisdom, that discernment each day. If we're not in his word, we're not seeking him, we're not coming to him, we'll become like that fool again. We'll think that we are the God we need, that our ways are correct. Our knowledge is right. But we have to come to God. It's his way, his knowledge, his understanding that gives us that peace, that hope, that joy in our lives. So we're going to be careful that we don't return to the old ways, that we're still seeking God, getting his wisdom, getting his knowledge, doing the will of God. And we know it's very clear what the will of God is. It's no secret Ephesians 4, says, in reference to your former way of life, you are to rid yourselves of the old self, which is being corrupted in accordance with the lusts of deceit, and that you are to be renewed in the spirit of your minds, and to put on the new self, which in the likeness of God has been created in righteousness and holiness of the truth. It's all through the New Testament we can read what the will of God is. God wants us to come to him. He wants us to accept his salvation. To get rid of our old self, the self that was destructive, that's going to lead us to death. To give up those things, the selfish, the prideful things, the things that we, that we hate God because of. The new self, to allow the spirit to come in us, to renew us, to sanctify us, to change us, to make us into the likeness of Christ. And the results, we see that in our church. We see the love, the act of service, the prayer, the submissiveness, humble. We see Christ. And people see that love and they see the hope in Christ. 
They see the joy they can have in him. They see that the results of that, a, re a renewed life, a different life, a life that's totally opposite to this world. And that is for us as Christians who know him, who have been changed, understand his love, his mercies, to walk in wisdom, to wa don't waste our time, to give up the things that take our time away, take our love away from God. Don't be foolish. Understand what God's will is. Get into his word. Come together. And know that. And allow that to work through us. We see in 30, verse 31, four, or chapter 4, it says, All bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and slander must be remo removed from you along with all malice. I think I read that, didn't I? I think I did. I don't know, I lost my notes here. What happens when I talk too long? I miss my notes. But for us in our lives, what are we doing? Well, how are we living? For us, even as Christians, we're not, we're not immune to this. We don't have, it doesn't keep us from that. Right? We can get back, we can live a foolish life being a Christian. We can live an unwise life being a Christian. We can waste time in our life as a Christian. For us to examine our lives daily, God, what am I doing? Am I allowing my old self to creep back in? Am I allowing my old way of thinking creeping back in? Or I'm humbly coming to you. Know that I'm broken. And it's because of you that I have this hope. I have this assurance with my salvation that when he comes back, I'll be there with you for eternity. I have that hope and joy, that peace that he was willing to give us here on this earth. It's God's purpose, God's will is to bear the image of his likeness. We're adopted into the family of God. We're his children. And as, as his children, we are to look like him. And are we doing that? Are people seeing that? We know in our lives, it's, we, we've talked about this many times at our church, people who leave the church, Youth kids that leave the church. Because why? They see the hypocrisy in the church. Do this, but we live this way. Our lives, are we saying this here as we come on Sunday? Or we and when we're not here, are we, we something different? Are our old self coming through? And that's not how, we, how we're supposed to live. There's no two. We can't live both ways. There's only one way. And when we leave this building, we're by ourselves. How do we live? That's our true measure. Are we living to the old self and we, that is who we are? We're putting on a mask when we come here. We're, we're, we're faking it. We haven't allowed God to work in us and to change us. Because of one of these things, we're living unwisely. We're wasting our time. We're not coming to God, doing, finding his will. Allowing him to work through us. We see from this point, um, the transition changes. Paul talks about being filled with the Spirit, what that looks like. We see in verse 18, it says, Do not get drunk on wine in which, the, which there is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit. We think that's kind of a weird thing to do, right? Either we don't get drunk, so be filled with the Spirit. But Paul here is doing a comparison and a contrast. There's a purpose why he does this. To show us the difference. See, when, even in Paul's time, Right? They show that there was pagan worship, we'd be getting drunk, and things that happened with that. And what that leads to, the control from that. Paul's saying is when, when you get drunk, you're under its influence. You've lost all your self control. It now controls you. What happens when we go into that kind of state? It could be drugs, it could be lust. These things control us. That's why there's lots of the verses there are many telling us to get rid of those things. Things that have influence that take us, control us, and lead us into things that are not right. We, uh, we, we had friends years ago that uh, Jen and I, you know, non-Christian friends, and they always love having people over to the house, and they always invited us, and we never went, but we thought, okay, we kind of feel guilty. They keep asking us. We feel bad. We should, we'll, we'll go over you know, on, on, a, on a Saturday night, we just uh, we'll come over and say hi to everybody that we know. And so we get there and, you know, non-Christians and their, their idea of a good time was alcohol. You know, they, they say you can't have fun unless you drink. So we only lasted an hour.
But in that hour, the consumption of alcohol was quick, and the influence was there quickly as well. They lost their self-control. They lost the words that they should not be saying. It wasn't long before there's married couple and single couples. The jokes that were being said were inappropriate. But at that moment, nobody cared. There's no control. People indulged too much and they were sick. What happens is then what ha- when we lose control, the old self comes and the desires of our mind and our flesh come through. And we see that. We left and we heard stories afterwards. And we see the progression of the, the, that those people getting together. Marriages split up. Things happen there you think only happen in the movies. But when you let something influence you, take your control, it will lead you into a spot where you won't want to go. The sin will come out. And see, Paul uses this comparison. He says, you, when you're filled with the Spirit, you're under its influence, but that's where it stops. You don't lose control under the Spirit. Like alcohol, drugs, or lust. The Spirit gives you control. Galatians 5 talks about one of the, the, uh, the gifts of the fruits of the Spirit is self-control. We don't lose ourselves being filled with the Spirit. We don't lose ourselves knowing God. We have control. We have clear mind. We see what God wants us to do. We become like Christ. Where alcohol takes everything from the person, it's control, it's balance, discrimination, wisdom, judgment. You lose everything. But the Spirit gives us all that. When people say when they're drunk, they're like an animal, like a beast. They're not human. Being filled with the Spirit makes us human, makes us what God has planned to create us. Makes us like Christ. And that's what Paul is saying for us to be wise, spend our time with God. Don't be foolish. Understand what His will is. Be filled with the Spirit. Don't allow these things of the world to have influence over you, control over you, because it's going to take you to death and destruction. You won't look like Christ. You may say you are in Christ, but you won't. People will know that. We see here from verse 19 and 21. There's three results that Paul gives us from being filled with the Spirit. Verse 19 says, Speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody with your hearts to the Lord. Now, this is not some crazy cult thing now, because you're a Christian, you have to only come and sing hymns and speak in these weird things. No. That's not what Paul is saying. It's Christian fellowship. When we come together, we'll come, we'll, we'll teach each other, we'll edify the church. We'll come, we'll sing songs. We'll come and we'll speak scripture to each other. We'll talk about Christ, what Christ is doing, what we learned. That's what he's saying. We're filled with the spirit we, we will, that will come out of us. We'll recognize all the things that God has done. We'll share that. We'll share with the learning that we're doing. We'll come together and joy and sing songs together, glorifying God. And that's what we do in public. And when Paul says here, and making melody in your hearts to the Lord, it's what you do in private. It's always there. When you go in your private life, it doesn't end. You can continue with that. You can continue to have joy in your heart. Worshiping God in the things that you do that's not seen. In verse 20, because of that, because of that joy, that psalms you, you sing to each other, you, the, the hymns that you come, the teaching you come, give to each other, you hear it says, always giving thanks for all things in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to God our and Father. Giving thanks to him about everything he's given us. Look at the things we have here. We can't, we, we can't be upset. The blessings God has given us, the things that he's done, the mercies that he continually gives us each day, the plan he has for our life, Going through the blast. Think of all the things you have, right? Your health. Even if not, God is carrying you through. God's grace, his salvation, has made us alive. 
We're here, we're suffering for a short time, but when Christ comes back, we're going to have eternity with him in full, in full glory. But today, we look with our hearts, we got, we're filled with the Spirit. We understand, we're learning his word. We're understanding his will. We'll be thankful to him because it is nothing of us that will we have. Our, our strengths, our achievements, our wisdom, our skill is because of what God has given us. We didn't earn it. We didn't create it. He gave it to us for his purpose, for his glory. We are to thank him for that. We thank for our families, for our jobs, what we have, the things that we, we need, not the things that we want. He gives us what we need. And we see these, these riches that he's lavishes with. Because we have peace. We, the world doesn't matter what happens in this world, even today in this crazy world of COVID. The things, disasters could happen. Wars could break out. But we have hope and joy and peace. We ha- our eyes are not fixed on this world, but it's on the eternity what's to come. Because it doesn't matter what happens in this world. We are secure. We've been sealed with the Holy Spirit. When Christ comes back, we are with him. Our joy, our love is not of this world. It is of Christ and God. And so for us, that when we fill with that spirit, we'll come together, edify the church together, pray with one another, care for one another, love one another, praise God for the things he's done for us. And the last thing he says here in verse 21, and subject your, yourself to one another in the fear of Christ. If you feel the spirit to show gentleness, meekness, Love, submission. We see that in the world today where that's being challenged, isn't it? We don't want to submit to different things, authorities, to others, to rules. And as a Christian, being filled with the Spirit is to be someone who's humble. Because first we submit to who? To God. We give ourselves to Him. We obey Him. We do His will. And his will shows, as Paul goes on after this in the rest of chapter 5 and, and, and chapter 6, going through all the different people, right? We, we submit to our spouses, husbands and wives, kids to our parents and parents to our kids, the slaves, servants, to those in authority over us. We show that. That's showing Christ. I know there's a lot here. You could stretch this out for a long time. But for us to see in our lives today, we need this reminder. And I thank you, I thank this church for being here, for the people in this church, for seeing Christ, for living, being wise. And for us each day, it's so easy it can come upon us that we can't forget, that we can get back to our old ways. And that's why we need to be in his word. We need to come together, teach each other, pray with each other, be humble. Not to allow ourselves to think that we are superior to anybody else. That we don't need God. That we are smart enough. That we're wise enough on our own. To remember the sacrifice, the love daily that God gives to us. Wanting to be, to give us the the likeness of his son, the changes into his son. To be like him, the joy that we felt by accepting him. To show others who he is the joy that they would feel, that whatever this world promised them it has, this, does not come close to God at all. The peace and the love from Christ. And for us, I just want us to look at what are we doing with our time? In a year, I think since COVID, I think we were kind of blinked and two years have gone by, right? The times go quickly. And the older you get, the faster it goes. How much time do we have here? How much time does God allow myself to be here? Am I spending that time doing what I should be doing? And I have to look at that each day. I, none of us get to the point where we got it all, or we're, we're good. We're continually being sanctified into that perfect image when we, Christ comes back, we'll be, be finished. But he has a work, a plan for us. And he's faithful and just to complete it. And for us to look at our lives, what's our time? Is it with God or with the world? 
Let's pray. Lord and Heavenly Father, as we open your word, we thank you for your word. We thank you, Lord, for these instructions, these, these words that we, we get to know you, get to know what you've done for us, your love for us, Lord. The sacrifice that your son did for us so that we could be adopted, justified to you, the Father. Lord, we pray as a church and as brothers and sisters in Christ here, Lord, I thank you for them. I thank you for the blessing of this church. I pray, Lord, as we go through each day, we can look at our lives and to make sure, Lord, that we don't waste our time. We don't become unwise. We don't go back to the temptation snares that Satan sets up for us. That we fully give ourselves to you. We don't allow things to control us, Lord. We allow you, your spirit, to open our eyes to the truth and to your love. To find peace and happiness with you, Lord. To share that with others. To put all of our desires aside, Lord, and to put you first. We pray, Lord, as we come now in the ordinance of baptism, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for Esther in our heart. To come, Lord, to share with the world, the people here today, Lord, the change that you made in her. The, light now you, the likeness you have made, Lord, of Christ in her life. And, Lord, how she is faithful and she is showing the world that she is following you and giving her life to you. We thank you, Lord. We pray this in your name. Amen.